All right, so we're going to jump right into this. Um, we've covered Pes Pesach or Passover already. Mm -hmm. And the last time we were together, we completed 11 bread. Mm -hmm. Yah willing this evening, we're going to complete first fruits and feast of weeks. They go together nicely, the same way. Actually, they, all of them go together nicely because these are all the spring feasts and they are in the brick of the calendar together for a reason. But I wanted us to have a... Um, a verse to kind of um, guide our thoughts as we go through the rest of these feast days, which is Galatians chapter 3, verses 24 to 25. Mm -hmm. It says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Messiah, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Now, when we talk about the, the law that we're under, we're not under, it, it doesn't mean the whole Torah, right? There was one specific part of the Torah mm -hmm. that was training us for the Messiah, and that was the sacrificial law. And everything that the Torah is in some shape or form is a schoolmaster, right? It's training us for something. And as we look at the set apart days, they are also training us for something. They're, they were training the Israelites to be able to recognize when the Messiah came, who he would have been, what he would have done, and what he was going to accomplish. The scripture said in Colossians chapter 2, verse 16, that the, the law was a shadow of things to come. Right? It didn't begin to be a shadow in Colossians when Paul wrote that. When Paul wrote that to the, to the Colossian church, Messiah had already came, lived, crucified, resurrected, ascended. All that was already done. But yet Paul is still saying that the law, the Torah, was still a shadow of things to come. And one of the things he said in there that we should not let people judge is the feast days, is the appointments of Yahweh. They still mean something. Okay, so I want to kind of have that thought in the back of our minds as we begin to flesh out these spring feast days and bring it together um, at this conclusion. So everyone have your chart, hopefully. Um, again, we've already done this just to read quickly, to quickly recap. Passover is the 14th day of a bib. We um, do the Seder and we prepare our homes. That's the day we, you know, start working to make sure we have no leaven in our homes. You're um, allowed to work if you work outside your home. And this was a symbolic of the Messiah's sacrifice. He was our Passover lamb. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, or Chag HaMatzah, is from the 15th of Abib to the 21st of Abib. It's for seven days. We don't have any leaven in our homes. We don't eat anything leavened. We eat matzah and we gather together. On the first day and on the seventh day is a set-apart gathering, so we're not allowed to work on those days. And how we see the Messiah in the Feast of Unleavened Bread is he is that bread of affliction. Okay? So now we move on to Rashid Omer. In other words, first fruits. Um, or the first Omer. It'll make sense as we go through. So our commandment comes from Leviticus chapter 23, um, verses 9 through 12. We're going to start off by um, just reading through 9. Um, Sister Moria, can you read um, 9 and 10, please? You're, you're muted, sis. Okay, Leviticus 23, 9, 9 and 10, you said, right? Yeah, 9 and 10. Okay. And Yahweh spoke, spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye when ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priests. Hallelujah. So one of the things that we want to highlight when it comes to the feast days is they are tied to agriculture, right? They're happening at specific seasons. They're, they're happening when specific things are being um, 
um, grown and harvested, especially in the when we get to the fall feast, we see a lot of uh, um, it's a harvest feast. But even this feast of um, first fruit is an initial harvest. This is the first harvest of the season, right? Some of the things that were growing in the winter months or the early spring months, um, weeks, were things like barley or rye, more, more so your grains, right? They're planted at the end of fall. That's less, the last thing you would plant after Sukkot or right before Sukkot ended. That's what. That's the last thing you put in the ground. That's the first thing that's going to come up. And so they would take the first sheaf and they would bring the sheaf as an offering to the father before they did anything else with the rest of the grain. Um, verse 11 and 12, sis, if you don't mind. No, I don't mind. Torah. And he shall wave the sheaf before Yahweh to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Shabbat, the priest, the priest shall wave it. And he shall offer that day when he waved the sheep, and he lamb without blemish of the first of the first year for a burnt offering unto Yahweh. Hallelujah. So what mm -hmm. I want to what we want to highlight here because now we're getting a timetable. Mm -hmm. The feast of on the feast first fruits is one of the major differences of first fruits from what we already kept is Yahweh says specifically Abib fourteenth. Abib 15. He didn't mm -hmm. do that with a specific number on the calendar date for the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And I wanted to highlight that because in, in, in Judaism, they do give a date. They give mm -hmm. the date of Abib 16. And nowhere in Torah does Yahweh says on Abib 16th, you bring the first fruit. It's contingent on what is happening with Passover and Unleavened Bread. Because Passover and unleavened bread will always be the 14th and the 15th, but they will not always be on a Wednesday or a Thursday or a Monday or a Tuesday. But we're going to see that this feast day will always come on a specific date, but we won't know what number of that date it will fall consistently every year. But the mm -hmm. first part that what he tells us is that on the day after the Sabbath, right? So what day comes after the Sabbath? Look at your calendar or think about it. You don't got to think about it, right? What day comes after the Sabbath? Sunday, Yom Rishon. Sunday, right? Yom Rishon. If I said, meet me the day after the Sabbath, you're going to meet me on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do they do? Okay, we go back. Because mm -hmm. this is in verse 12. You take the sheaf and it's being waved. All right, this is not an offering that you're taking and you're just leaving it in a basket somewhere. You're not burning it. You're actually lifting it up and waving it. And that's significant. Mm -hmm. okay? So let's take a look at our template. We've been working with this calendar um, since we started this journey. And this is just a practice calendar. These dates are not specific dates for anything, just to um, clarify that. And so we already filled in the dates for Abib 14th and Abib 15th. And we also filled in before Abib, the last day of Unleavened Bread, which will always be um, Abib 21st. But let's highlight what we what the scripture says, right? It says the day after the, uh, the, the Sabbath. So the Sabbath of this week will fall on the 21st. Mm -hmm. And which means that Whenever we're going to bring this feast, this this um this sheep offering is going to be on the 22nd based on our calendar. It's going to be the first day of the week. So the, after the Sabbath, that sunset, mm -hmm. we have the feast of first fruits coming in in that evening, that Saturday <laughs> evening, and that Sunday during the day. Remember, we talked about this, the, how the days are accounted for. The Feast of First Fruits is always on a Sunday, always on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And according to the scripture, what did we do on this day? What is done? Um, we've been the fruit. 
you wave it, right? You wave, you wave the sheaf, right? You take it. And so this is just a couple of pictures of what the sheaf would look like, right? It's a bundle of your grain. You can make them so big, they can stand up. We, we hear that um, when Joseph had his dream that the sheaves were standing up, mm -hmm. right? So these, you would take this sheaf and give it to the priest. The priest will wave it. Just to give a visual of what a sheaf would look like. All right, so when do we keep the appointment? It is always going to be the Sunday during the week of unleavened bread. These feast days work together, right? Unleavened first fruits will always fall within the feast of unleavened bread because together it tells a story. You mm -hmm. take it outside the feast of unleavened bread, you're not telling the same story. And that's going to become more evident as we pull everything together. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. All right. So we know it's going to be the Sunday during unleavened bread. What do we do? We actually are going to begin a count. It is called first fruits, which of course could imply there's a second fruit. But in the Hebrew, it is Rashid Omer. Omer number one. Omer is a, a, a weight, right? When when they were told to collect manna, they had to pick, they had to collect so in a, a certain amount of omers. It's like us saying, you know, a weight or a pound or how many ounces collect that much that much. So the omer is a measurement. Are we allowed to work on this day? We are, because there's no commandment when Yahweh told us to have this date that he said, you can't do any survival work. You can't um, cook or anything like that. So this is not a day if you work outside your home that you need the day off. If you work on weekends, um, but most people don't work on weekends, but you're, 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 you're fine. Okay. Any questions so far? All right. So now we got to fill in our last square, right? How do we see the Messiah in this day? And we're going to piece go back to what's happened with the Messiah, just picking up from the story from, from Passover, his sacrifice. And we're going to do that by taking a look at Mark chapter 16. We're going to read through verses 1 to 6, but right now I want us to just focus on verses 1 and 2. Um, Sister Elisheba, do you have that? Can you read? Yes. Yeah. Toda. Mark 16. You want me one and two or one through six? One and two. Okay. And when the Sabbath was passed, Miriam from Magdala and Miriam, the mother of Yaakov, and Shiloma, both spices to go and anoint him. And verily, and very early, pardon, and very early <laughs> uh, on day one of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. Okay, thank you very much. So we have a, we have the time setting, right? The Sabbath was already over. And it was very early the next, the following morning of the first day of the week. Remember mm -hmm. our, our snapshot, right? Mm -hmm. That means there's somewhere here on the sixth in the evening, but the sun has not risen yet during the day part because they wouldn't have gone to they would not have gone to the tomb after sunset it had been too dark i'm sorry malka are you is that supposed to be the sixth day into the seventh day or the seventh day into the first day no 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 forget the, the numbers don't mean anything you're talking about the number six and seven no, the, the sixth day because they're 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 the first day but you're showing us the sixth and the seventh day Right. Oh, I'm, okay. No, I'm just trying to highlight the evening part and the day part. Oh, okay. Absolutely passed. Okay. okay. So mm -hmm. the Sabbath has already passed. Mm -hmm. And so they're not there on the evening part of that Friday evening. I'm sorry. They're not there the evening part of that Saturday because the Sabbath has already passed. Somewhere after they pass, the Sabbath is over, they're heading towards the sepulchre but it's not the night part of that day. I mean, because it was getting ready for the sun to rise. I mean, okay? so it was not Friday night. It's, it's not Saturday night. Okay. 
So here we have the evening part of the Sabbath, day part of the Sabbath. The first day will begin that Saturday evening, mm -hmm. which also, as we ascertained, would also be first fruits. Amen. Okay. okay. And 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 this is just a, this is just us reading the scripture and having the scripture tell us. Mm -hmm. So we can this right this tells us when the Messiah was crucified. Amen. Okay, hallelujah. Let's con let's let's continue. Um, Sister Ella Shaver, you can pick up at verses three and four. Okay. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb for us? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was extremely large. Keep going, sis. Three up to six. And having entered into the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right wearing a white robe, and they were greatly astonished. And he said to them, Do not be much astonished. You seek Yahshua of Nazareth, who was impaled. He was raised. He is not here. See Amen. the place where they laid him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When they get there, mm -hmm. he's not there. Mm -hmm. He has already resurrected. Okay, let's take another another witness for this timetable. Because the timetable is important. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. In Matthew 28, 1, it says, In the end of the Sabbaths, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. We see the same highlights. The Sabbath was already ending. It was going towards the first day of the week. When we drop down to verse 6, another testimony of the encounter they had. The angel says, he is not here, for he is risen, as he said, come and see the place where the master lay. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we're going to stay in Matthew, and we're going to go to Matthew chapter 12. And we're going to go to verse... Um, 38 and 40. Right. Then certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and there shall no sign be given you but the sign of the prophet Jonah. Verse 40. And this is Yahushua speaking. He said, mm -hmm. As Jonah was three days and three nights. In the belly of the whale, of the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, given mm -hmm. to um, given to it. But the sign, um, oh no, that that's a miss, that's a miss, copy and paste too much. But mm -hmm. this, so the main thing is three days and three nights. So this is the Messiah, right? And if he says three days and three nights. I'm going to believe that he meant three days and three nights. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at our calendar, right? The peach is evening parts. Mm -hmm. The lime green is day parts. And then when we add in the first day of the week, which is also first fruits, we see that it lines up beautifully. We know that Yahushua was crucified on a Tuesday evening. During or the Tuesday evening, he was probably he took his Passover with his disciples. During the night, he was on trial, and during the day part, he was crucified, and they wanted to take him down before sunset. So he was down even before sunset on that Wednesday. <laughs> when we get to that Wednesday sunset for that first evening, he's already been buried. He's already been laid in the tomb because he had to fulfill. What was the only thing he said? Three days, three nights. Mm -hmm. And I want to highlight that because there are teachings out there that says any part of a day is a day. This is why they have Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday. Because any part of Friday equals a whole day. Every part of Saturday equals a whole day. Every part of Sunday. Equals... So they say, yep, that's it. But wait a minute. He himself said three days and three nights. He didn't have to say that. He could have just said three days and y'all figured it out. 
He was very precise of how long he was going to be in the tomb. When Jonah was eat, was swallowed by that whale, right? Oh man, poor Jonah. Who would have known that all of that was by design? Mm -hmm. Right? Jonah was being disobedient. He was running away from the father, blah, 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 blah. Yahweh had this big fish swallow him. And if he just had, mm, staying there three days and three nights. Right? How many centuries apart is Jonah and Yahushua? But all of that was the only sign Yahushua was going to give us. And then we have it. It just lines up so beautifully. Mm -hmm. Add to it. Don't got to take away. With it. All we got to do is allow the Holy Spirit to walk us through the word and connect things. That's why when we started this, we had to establish what is a day. Because if we didn't have the understanding that a day has two parts, evening and morning, then we would you can fall for the doctrines of any part of a day is a day. Okay. Um, check in the chat real quick. Jonah one seventeen. Toda. Okay. Let's continue. So what happened? the first day of the week after the crucifixion, All right? Let's continue this story. And with that, we're going to pick up in um, John chapter 20. And we're going to read 11 to 17. If anyone could get that and read it, I'd appreciate it. John 20. I have it. Hold on. 11 to 17. Okay. And Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher and sees two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Yahushua had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken my master, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Yahushua standing and knew not that it was Yahushua. Yahushua said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She supposed him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Oh, Yahushua said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Yahushua said unto her, Touch me not. For I'm not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, and to my Elohim and your Elohim. Hallelujah. When is this happening? First day. First day of the week. He has not finished what he has to do. At this point, he's resurrected. He has now, he now has to present himself present his offering before Yahweh. See, this is why when you would have an offering, you would take it to the priest, right? That was you submitting it. The priest was in place of the father. That's it. Mm -hmm. When you were waving it, right? Who are you waving it before, right? You don't, you don't wave like this. You wave like this, right? Lift it up high. So Yahushua says, don't touch me. I have to present myself in the book of Hebrews. I can't, I don't remember the address right now where it talks about that he had to offer one time, you know, he went before father and, and offered his blood be, before the father. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's continue. He says, don't touch me. I have not yet ascended. This is the first day of the week. Let's go to first Corinthians chapter 15 verses three and four. And this is Paul talking to the Corinthian assembly and he's explaining some basic things to them, right? He begins by telling them what I've taught you. If someone has verse three and four and read it, I appreciate it. I have it. Thank you, Ellie. Um, I'm just making sure I'm in the right spot. Okay. For I delivered to you at the first that which I also received 
that Mashiach died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised the third day according to the scriptures. Hallelujah. So he begins to tell them, remind them of, all right, I'm telling you what I was taught, right? And what I was taught was that the Messiah died for our sins, he was buried, he rose again after the third day, right? Let's drop down to verses 20 to 24. Ellie, can you get continue, please? Mm -hmm. But now Mashiach has been raised from the dead and has become the first fruit of those having gone. For since death is through a man, resurrection of the death is also through a man. For all, for as all die in Adam, so also all shall be made alive in Mashiach. And each in his own order, Mashiach the first fruits, then those who are of Mashiach at his coming. Then the end, when he delivers up the reign of Allahim the Father, when he has brought to naught all rule and all authority and power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Paul just strung together all this feast day. He said he's the crucified, he's the resurrected, but he's also the first fruit. Afterward, that means there's going to be a second harvest of fruit. Remember, it's, this is just the first fruit. This is the beginning of the harvest because we are also called the first fruit of human. I, I don't know why I put that scripture in here. If we do, then you already heard it. But we're called the first fruit of man. Did I put it in here? I think it's in Revelations where um, those of us who accept the Messiah now, we're like a first fruit because there's going to be another season where people is going during the millennium where people are going to have another opportunity to choose him. They won't be part, they're, they're not first fruit. They are part of that other harvest. So we're trying to make sure we are part of that first fruit offering, right? Because when he comes back and he reigns, those of us who are already in him will reign with him. Hebrews chapter 9, 12. Told, ah, Koti. <laughs> Hebrews 9, 12, that's a scripture talking about the Messiah presented himself before the Father with his with his blood as an offering. Any any questions or thoughts before I continue? If I'm going too fast, if I need to slow down, back up, just just let me know. I mean, this is this is just so elegant how it's just laid out, just um, allowing the scripture to just interpret itself and to help and just to see. It's just so elegant it's just totally yeah. yeah i mean this, this can't be it can't be orchestrated by man this, hallelujah this, hallelujah i love beautiful. that word elegant Abba it is that's yeah. what came to my spirit it's just hallelujah so hallelujah, hallelujah. One, one of the things not to get off a tangent but if you got to be winking and twisting and and, and turning to mm -hmm. that to me is a sign that it's it, it says that a fool need not err. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay? A fool need not err. That means I made it so simple, even a fool kid, a fool kid. Can right? If it's complicated, you did it. You did it. Man did it. Right? Mm -hmm. Your flesh did it. Your carnality did it. Your pride did it. Um, but Yahweh mean, didn't do it. His, nope. plan is, his plan is for as much of us to get it as possible. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. All right. So let's go back to our little charty chart. And that was um, I make I'm making everybody. I'm sorry, Sister Elisha, but go ahead. Revelations 14 4 is about the ah, <laughs> Revelations 14 4. Let me say I added it by notes because I don't think I did, but that's I think that's you I mentioned it in a previous okay. Session. Revelations 14 4. Hold on, sis. I don't know. I'm making three. <laughs> suffer from my um, visual, needing visuals and needing notes. So let's fill in the chart. <laughs> <laughs> no suffering. I'm enjoying that. No, yeah, because we have the same sickness. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Feast of Weeks, when is it? There's, oh, wait a minute, what just happened? We, <clears throat> Did we get there? Oh, okay, so no, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Oh, no, we put yeah. talk about the end. Mm -hmm. All right. So let me calm down. Ooh. Okay. So how do we see Mashiach in this feast day? 
it we see it in his resurrection and his and his ascension. I heard mm-hmm. one of the mores, uh, I believe it was Ahab Al one year said, he just put a different value for me on the ascension. He said it wasn't that he just resurrected. If he just resurrected and stayed on this plane, that would have done nothing for us. Right. Right. It was the resurrection and the ascension. It was him ascending before the father Hallelujah. that set us free. Right. So let's continue into our last spring feast, which is different than the rest because it doesn't have a specific date, which again, I'm not trying to bad talk Judaism. I'm just trying to highlight what they do so you know what they do and you understand that someone says to you, this is the day for the feast day. You would know why they say that, okay? Mm-hmm. So they have a date on their calendar for um, the Feast of Weeks or Shavuot. Yahweh did not give us a specific date. There's no way in scripture I can say that he said it's in this month and this date. It's not because this is a day where we now have to pay attention and we have to count. Shavuot is called the Feast of Weeks, but the count of it began with first fruits. That's why first fruit is called Rashid Omer. So when we're counting, it is called, um, we're, we're counting the Omer. Each day is considered like um, we're going to keep first fruits next Sunday. Next week, Sunday, we're going to keep the first fruits. So that means next week, Monday is going to be the second day of the Omer. Next week, Tuesday is going to be the third day of the Omer and so on and so forth, right? So this is how close these two days work together. So let's go back to the foundation of our feast days, which is always Leviticus 23. Okay, I'm just looking at my notes real quick. Okay. Commandment, verse 15. And you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. What day of the week is the morrow after the Sabbath? Sunday. Sunday, right? From the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, from the day you brought the first fruit offering, you need to count for yourself Seven Sabbaths. I'm sorry. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Verse 16. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall you number 50 days. And you shall offer a new meat offering unto Yahweh. Verse 17. You shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two tenth deals. They shall be a fine flour. They shall be bacon with leaven. They are first fruits unto Yahweh. A lot of things here. Verse 21. You shall proclaim on that selfsame day that it may be an holy convocation unto you. You shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statute forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. Mm -hmm. So these couple of verses gave us instructions on when the appointment is and what we're supposed to do. So let's go ahead and begin to figure out when do we keep these appointments? All right, holy convocations don't serve our work. All right. Um, I already said this. The count begins with first fruits. In other words, the Rashid Omer. So here, I kind of took away a lot of the little squares and stuff. I want to make this really, really simple, right? Excuse me. In verse 15, it says that we are to count seven Sabbaths from first fruits. Okay, so let's do that. Here's first fruits. Here's the first Sabbath. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Second Sabbath, third Sabbath, fourth Sabbath, fifth Sabbath, going to another month, sixth Sabbath, seventh Sabbath. All right, so we've counted seven Sabbath, but he also said that it has to be seven Sabbaths 
and 50 days. Let's go back to the scripture real quick. Even onto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, so we're right back to what day of the week? First. We're back to the first day of the week because he says the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, that should be your 50th day. So we know that if this is the seventh week, that's the 49th day, and the day after it is 50. I mean, so you have to have in your count seven Sabbaths and 50 days. The way Judaism does it does not have seven Sabbaths and 50 days. You're either going to end up with six Sabbaths in according to their count or eight Sabbaths. Because they're going to be more focused on making sure they get that 50 days in. But y'all didn't say one or the other. And the only way you can get both is if you start to count correctly with the Feast of First Fruit. You, it, it will never fail. You will always end up on a Sunday. So this is why he didn't tell us month and date, right? We had to count, but it will always be on a Sunday. Any questions? Hallelujah. All right, so now, all right. How do we see the Messiah in this feast day? All right. One of let's go to Luke chapter 24, verse 49. And this is the master speaking, and this is after his resurrection and after his ascension he had already gone to the father okay when he saw them he saw them a couple of times before he went and didn't return and he tells them behold i send the promise of my father on you but tarry in the city of jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high this is what he tells them and we see that in the book of Acts. Someone could get Acts chapter one, verses one to five for me. And when you get it, just hold it. I'm, I'm gonna get a cup of water. All right. All right. Who got Acts 1, 1 to 5, and someone else could just start working on getting Acts 2 as well, get through these readings. All right. Who has um chapter 1 for me, for us? Have it. Toda. Um, Acts chapter 1. The first account I made of Theophilus, of all that Yahushua began both to do and to teach, until the day when he was taken up, after giving instructions through the set-apart spirit to the emissaries whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering, by mainly infallible proofs, being seen by them for 40 days, speaking concerning the reign of Elohim, and meeting with them, he commanded them not to leave Yerushalayim, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which you have heard from me. Um, because Yahukanan truly immersed in water, but you shall be immersed in the set-apart spirit not many days from now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Arch two. Who has two, one, and four? I have it. Okay. Elisheba, you could get it, and Moria, you could do 14 and 18. Mm -hmm. All right, Elisheba. And when the day of the festival of Shavuot had come, they were all with one mind and in one place. For a second, why were they all together? <laughs> <laughs> right? Exactly. All right, continue. And suddenly there came a sound from the heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and settled on each of them. 
and they were filled, they were all filled with the set apart spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them to speak. Hallelujah. So here comes the entrance. This is the first entrance of the Holy Spirit on the body of Yahushua. There was, there was a day when he, uh, I forget what book is in, when he resurrected and he came back and he blew on them. It was only, that was just his disciples. He gave that, he said, receive the Holy Spirit. And he blew on them. But this is the whole assembly, the body of Yeshua who were keeping that appointment that received the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different languages. They were speaking languages mm -hmm. that were understandable mm -hmm. because a couple of verses they say, aren't these people, aren't these people speaking our language? How, mm -hmm. how all these different nations, but we understand what they're saying. So it wasn't gibberish. They were speaking languages. And so later on in the chapter, they say, oh, they're drunk. They're full of new wine. And then Peter says, they ain't full of new wine. Go ahead, Moria. What Peter say? He said, Peter, standing up with the 11, lifted up his voice and said unto them, ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seen as but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the, prof the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days with I will say Elohim, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And on your servants and on your handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my Ruach, and they shall prophesy. Hallelujah. Peter told them right now, to say, hey, what you're watching is what was prophesied by another prophet. This is what you're seeing. Yahweh has now put on us, those of us who are in the body of Yahushua, when we accept salvation when we are baptized and we receive that Holy Spirit, we are receiving that baptism of power. We do not function as just regular people anymore. We have the power to now function in tune with the Father. We become part of the machine of salvation. You might need to be able to speak in prophecy. You might be able to heal. You might need to teach. You might need to minister. Whatever it is, right? That's a whole other lesson. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. These gifts are not for you to make you feel special. Yahweh has a purpose for each one of us in the body. We are working for a master that is all about salvation. And we're able to do that because of his son, right? So when we tie this all together, and we look at the Feast of Weeks, the date, 50 days and seven Sabbaths from when we bought that first Omer or that wave sheep offering. What did we do? We had that holy set apart convocation. What was also interesting, and I'm not going to go into it because I don't want to take away, make this longer than it needs to be. When they bought that bread offering, mm -hmm. they had to bring it, they had to bring it leavened. Mm -hmm. Right. So we see it. We see a transition where before we started this feast, no leaven, no leaven, no leaven. I don't want to see it in your house. Well, now mm -hmm. Yahweh is saying, I want to see it. <laughs> right. Don't come to me with leavened bread. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, with uh, no, with with unleavened bread, Cain, Torah. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a whole nother thought and pray about that. Ask the father to give you understanding is he will give it to you. He'll show you, he'll make you, he'll let you see why. Right. Mm. But we had this holy convocation. Um, we are not allowed to work again. The good thing about this, this is also on a Sunday, but if it's you work weekends, you need to be off this, this, this day. And how do we see the Messiah? This is when he gives us the Ruach HaKodesh. This was the entrance of the Holy spirit onto the body of Yahushua. He kept his word. He told them, don't leave in Jerusalem. Don't leave Jerusalem. He said, don't leave Jerusalem. Imagine they had left Jerusalem. 
Yeah. Right? It says in my translation, the KJV, it says when the day of Pentecost was fully come, right? We be fully come. That means because 37 days is not fully come. 40 days is not fully come. 50 days is fully come. That means there have been 50 days. There's been seven Shabbats. And even though she didn't have to say this, 50 days really do mean 50 days. Yesterday at service, um, the Moray said that there's a teaching out there in Israel that they are counting a hundred days. I don't even <laughs> want to understand how they got a hundred days. I don't use the brain power. But that to me is a blatant, that's a blatant twisting of the word. See, I could, there were people already who have kept Passover, right? We haven't kept Passover yet. We keep Passover tomorrow night. There's other people who have already kept Passover last month, a couple of weeks ago. And even though back in the day, it used to really just like, get under my skin. You know what the father helped me to see? They are trying to keep a bead 14. They're not trying to keep a bead one. They're not trying to keep a bead 28. They are to the best of their ability trying to keep a bead 14, just as we are. But when, but when you're saying a feast day that means 50, you're counting a hundred days? That is just total twisting of Yahweh's word. That is yeah. evil and wickedness. And this is why this, I'm going to stop sharing my screen because I believe this is my last slide. A grounded in Yahweh's word. Um, what you don't understand, ask them for understanding. Study, read, apply, walk it out. Um, so with that being said, we have completed the spring feast of Yahweh. And the timing is perfect, at least for us, because we have not, I know, most of us here haven't kept it yet, but if, even if you have kept it already, I pray that this is an understanding that will make it deeper for you, the understanding, right? To just do something, you know, like just keep an appointment, but when you're doing it and you know what it means, it makes it different. So I'm going to stop rambling. Any questions or comments um, before we close out this evening? I think you did pretty good. It wasn't even an hour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. You did very well. You did very well. Hallelujah. Praise y'all.